You want me to put that on my todger? This one's wife. Face hugger. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. What is a face hugger? Well, I'm going to ask you to bear with me for a few moments as I explain more about the concept of the face hugger to help you understand the comparison between the face hugger and recent activity of this one's wife. A face hugger is a parasitic life form. Hmm, already there's a comparison that hatches from xenomorph eggs. They serve as the second stage of the alien's life cycle, acting as intermediaries for the alien with the sole purpose of implanting the xenomorph embryos in other living beings. There are several facehugger variants that differ in size and appearance. Thus, the common concept of the facehugger is from the film franchise Alien, which many of you, I'm sure, has watched. Face huggers are small creatures. Well, this one's wife is roughly five foot six, possibly a bit shorter. That is somewhat comparable to Chelicarata arthropods, such as arachnids, how often as I described her as a spider, and horseshoe crabs. Well, this one's wife does sometimes scuttle as if she's like a crab moving from side to side. They are beige in colour, how apt for the Duchess of Industrial Beige, possessing four pairs of appendages. Well, I'm sure Harry feels like he's subjected to four pairs of appendages when the grip of doom keeps coming his way, resembling a pair of skeletal hands fused together. Well, indeed, when that grip of doom is deployed against him, it would indeed feel like a skeletal hand is fused to his own. It allows them to crawl rapidly and a long spine-like tail adapted for making great leaps. Face huggers lack visible eyes. One might argue that this one's wife lacks any eyes filled with life and any facial features. Well, she's certainly been trying to erase hers except for a single orifice located on the creature's underside which houses an ovipositor to insert the alien embryo. Face huggers are parasitoid in nature. Sole instinctive purpose is to make contact with living hosts and implant them with embryos. A comparison might be made with the narcissist whose sole purpose is to make contact with a particular appliance and take them over. Face huggers will remain within the egg in suspended animation until a living being, preferably larger in size, disturbs it. True to its name, the facehugger will grip its legs around the victim's head, I'm sure this one's wife has done that a few times, and wrap its tail around the neck. In addition to carrying potent acidic blood in its body, the facehugger can excrete acid as well when latching onto a host. Well, the vitriolic comments of this one's wife could be compared to acid. Upon making contact, the facehugger administers a cyanose-based paralytic in order to render the host unconscious and immobile. I'm pretty sure that those intimate victims of this one's wife would feel like they've been administered a cyanose-based paralytic which has rendered them unconscious and immobile. After a successful attachment, the facehugger will insert the ovipositor down the host's throat while simultaneously implanting an embryo. The face hugger would remain attached to the host for anywhere from less than a minute to 16 hours, keeping them alive by aiding in their breathing to prevent the host from being smothered. Once the implantation is completed, the face hugger detaches itself from the host, crawling away until it finally dies. The victim then awakens with no awareness of the implantation, believing themselves to have been asleep, and appears to have a normal, healthy bodily function. The embryo implanted within the host will eventually develop into the next stage of the life circle, the chest burster. Once a face hugger has successfully attached itself onto a host, it is almost impossible to remove it to prevent implantation. Thus, when the narcissist has got their claws into a victim, it's virtually impossible to remove them. Attempts to remove face huggers generally prove fatal to their host. An attempt to become between the narcissist and their victim invariably proves problematic. Invariably, the parasitoid will respond by tightening its tail around the host's neck and its acidic blood prevents it from being cut away. In addition, its grip 
on the host's head is strong enough to tear the host's face off if it's forcibly removed. Well, again, you try and remove a narcissist from his or her prey and you will recognise an ensnarement grip that is just as much as that of the face hugger. But why am I put in mind of the face hugger when it comes to this one's wife? Why is there a comparison between her and this fictional parasitic individual? Well, as pumped out by one of the PR puff pieces from Stephanie Petit via People, it was reported that this one's wife and Prince Harry had a romantic moment during their last day in Colombia. Oh, how lovely. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex displayed their salsa dancing skills during a visit to a youth organisation in Cali on August the 19th, as seen in a video shared on social media. Harry twirled this one's wife around the dance floor before she brought him in for a kiss on the lips. Yes, and there you see the face hugger in action. Not just kissing him on the lips in the way that you might ordinarily do with a quick peck or even a lingering kiss, but she has to bring her hands up to his face like a face hugger. Yes, the beige parasite ensures that its victim can't escape with an almost impossible to remove grip as it implants that kiss on Harry. This, of course, is all done for the purposes of facade management. Look at me. Look at my idyllic marriage. Look at how in love we are. The report continues by explaining that Prince Harry, 39, and this one's wife, <coughs> 43, shared several sweet exchanges during their four-day tour, including when the Duke of Sussex gave his wife a peck on the forehead while they embraced during a stop at the National Centre for the Arts in Bogota. Throughout the trip, they also held hands and gave each other pats on the back. See parts pass him for the direct assertion of control by this one's wife in that regard. The pair have openly shown their love through public displays of affection since they took their relationship public in 2017. Now, pausing there. Harry may well be demonstrating his love for his wife through such demonstrations of affection, but this one's wife is not. She's a narcissist. She has no emotional empathy. She is incapable of love. Her narcissism makes her believe that she loves her husband, but her behaviour demonstrates, of course, that she does not. The narcissism causes her to believe that she loves him so that she's motivated to engage in acts of the face hugger in public so that she asserts control over him physically, manages the facade and draws fuel by way of people's reactions. This is all passed off as her being touchy-feely and that she's kind and loving and luck at these public displays of affection. But you're in the know. You're in the know because of my work. You're in the know that she's only doing this because it's performative, in order to make people think that she loves Harry. It's only done, driven by her narcissism, to make people react to it. And once again, rather than just give him a kiss, it's over the top, the hands either side of his face, the gripping him in that fashion. All done, not because she loves him, but because she wants to show the world, look how much I love him. Rejoice, respond, give me the fuel. Remember, she doesn't consciously think in terms of fuel. She doesn't consciously think in terms of control. But once again, her narcissism causes her to behave this way. And with much of what she does, it doesn't quite get it right. It's over the top. It's performative. It's obvious. And when you understand that she's a narcissist, you spot it all the more. Thus, when I saw the picture that you have just seen, it put me in mind of the facehugger from Alien and further exploration into the background of the fictional face hugger made me realize that in actual fact it's alive and well and living in california i'm hg tudor thank you for listening